patients that are having allergen A can often patients that have what we call hematological malignancy, so they're the leukaemia patients and the like. And so they don't um, go on uh, the bisphosphonate medications, but the risk for those patients is they have quite mild ablative chemotherapy leading up to the transplant. And so really it's around um, identifying risks of odontogenic or teeth related infections that may potentially cause a febrile illness during the course of the chemotherapy leading up to the transplant and then longer term after the transplant is around identifying issues around risk for that patient from uh, dental decay due to reduce saliva production, risks around uh, oral graft versus host disease and also risks around recurrence, uh, not recurrence, there's new malignancies in, this, in the soft tissues of the mouth and the lips. It's very important for the patients before the transplant, they receive a comprehensive clinical and radiographic uh, dental examination, but subsequent to the transplant it's very important that the patient continues to maintain regular reviews with their dentist. One, to assess the oral graft versus host, because if they do have a greater um, uh, risk around malignancies, it's often linked to the graft versus host, and in particular the lichenoid presentations of that. Uh, patients have significant xerostomia or reduced saliva production, so that causes its own issues with dryness of the mouth and the discomfort related to that. It creates increased risk of dental decay. Patients often have problems with uh, the symptomatic management of dry mouth as well, which the dentist can help them with too. So it's quite a different uh, set of problems that you're looking after patients who've had a, an allogeneic transplant. Look, I think often uh, the case is that, well certainly in, in my experience in Adelaide here, that, that the clinicians are very aware of it and if there's an infection that, that they're looking for a, a cause, they will look at us and ask us to do a dental examination to identify if the bacteria that's found in the bloodstream is linked to an oral infection. So I think they are uh, fairly aware of it. The important messages are that it is in, uh, that a, the dentist does need to be part of the multidisciplinary team that's looking after patients being worked up and, and uh, prepared for either an autologous or an allogeneic transplant. The dentist needs to be involved in the pre-assessment process and importantly the dentist needs to remain involved in the care in the longer term after the transplant for both of those groups of patients but for different reasons and so one of the issues is that often dentists are forgotten not only by the, the clinicians sometimes but by the patients because the focus really is on the medical side of it but the dental part is very important as well.